Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be showing you how to install the ZWO electronic autofocuser to Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes that have the standard focuser, not the feather touch focuser, using the new ZWO C8 bracket. Now, as I mentioned, this installation video is for the standard version of the Celestron focusers on the Schmidt Cassegrain and the Rasa 8. So if you have a feather touch focuser, ZWO makes a separate bracket for that. But yeah, it's nice, they now make one for these standard versions, so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to install. Alright, so what do you need to get your EAF installed to your Schmidt Cassegrain? Well, number one, you're going to need the new ZWO EAF bracket for the Celestron C8 and C9 and a quarter inch. Now, I've been patiently waiting for this for about three months. It came out a couple weeks ago, so I bought two of them right as I saw they came in stock. So one for my C8, one for my Rasa 8, so I actually won't need that one today. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people have been using uh, 3D printed parts to attach their EAF to their Schmidt cast grain, and I'm sure it's worked well for them, but I'm just a little bit paranoid to put this nice product on there with a 3D printed part. So it's really nice to see that ZWO has come out with this bracket, especially for the popular Schmidt cast grain series. So they also make a version for the C11 and C14, since those use a bigger focuser shaft. Uh, but yeah, just opening up here, you get a bracket, a coupler, and the, uh, the hardware that you need. Uh, you actually don't need anything from the original ZWO EAF box unless you don't have a basic set of tools. So these two uh, Allen wrenches come with the EAF. If you have just a standard metric set, this will, this will work too. Um, so either of those. And then you're going to need a, a standard Phillips head screwdriver. And then last but not least, I use a Chewbacca mug for storing my screws so I don't lose them. <laughs> so thank you Chewbacca for being in this video. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start things off by just removing my imaging train here. Slipping that on. And then you're going to want to pull off your rubber focuser knob. Now, this can be tricky for some people. Sometimes it's really tight. So if you can't get it off, I'm going to show you a, another method to do this. Here it comes, just like that. So it just pops right off. So I'm just going to pop this back on here all the way and show you what I do if it's giving you trouble. I usually take a little piece of electric tape and just put it on here and make sure it's nice and flush, just like that. That, And then I take a uh, flathead screwdriver and I pry it, get inside there and pry it out just a little bit. So you're going to want to make sure you're pulling on it as you pry. So this should protect the finish of that retaining ring fairly well. So I'm just going to stick this in here and start prying it and pulling at the same time. Okay, starting to come there. And there we go. All you need is a little gap. And once you got that little gap, it should come off pretty easily. All right, with the focuser knob removed, I'm just going to remove these three screws real quick. Now this is probably the most important part of the entire focuser install. So you'll notice if I take this orange ring off and I just put the bracket over the top here, if you were to secure this, the focuser actually pops out. The diameter on this bracket of this hole is actually wide enough to allow the focuser to fit through it. And that's a problem because if you were to go put this on a mount and point it up to the sky, under the weight of gravity, this focuser would actually pop out. And it might pop through the, the grub screws on your coupler. So you don't want to install this bracket without the orange ring installed. So I'm just gonna force my, my focuser back in here. But if you, if you look at the diameter of these holes, they're not the same. The bracket has a larger diameter hole than this orange ring. So, that being said, you're actually going to need to put on the orange ring first before you install the bracket. So you're going to install them together. Now, the same is true of the 11 inch and 14 inch Schmidt Cassegrain install. And you might say, why is that? The focuser on the 11 inch and 14 inch is bigger. And that may be true, but it's for a separate reason, which I'm gonna show you right now. Now notice, for the 11 inch Schmidt Cassegrain, like this one here, the focuser shaft's a lot bigger, or the same goes for the 14 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. Now, if I stick this bracket over the top, it's going to hold everything in, which it should, so that, that works properly that way. 
However, you'll notice there's a big recessed area around here. So if I went ahead and secured this, it actually would not be level. So it still wouldn't be a proper connection. So even in the case of the C11 or the C14, you still need to install the bracket with the orange ring installed. So you're gonna install the orange ring first, have the bracket go over the top, and that's gonna give you the proper connection for your autofocuser. So you can see in both cases, you need to install the orange ring before the bracket. So in the case of the C8 and the C9 and a quarter inch, it's to prevent the focuser from popping out. And in the case of the C11 and the C14, it's to make sure that the bracket goes on level. Now there's one other very important thing you're gonna to wanna to do with this bracket before you install it. So I've actually been analyzing this thing for a few weeks now, and it's apparent that the C8 and the C9 and a quarter inch and the C11 and the C14 versions all have this same front plate here but it comes pre-configured for use on the C11 and C14. You'll notice that because these recessed holes don't line up with the C8 or the C9 and a quarter inch. And so if you do install it this way, yeah, it should work. But look, if you use these bolts and go through the holes, you're not gonna be getting very much length on these bolts. And so therefore you're not gonna be getting a whole lot of that bolt in the thread. So what you're gonna want to do is actually flip this around to the other side. And if I do that and use the recessed holes on the other side, look how much more length I'm getting on those bolts. It's a lot longer and a lot more secure of a connection. So if you're using the C8 or the C9 and a quarter inch with this bracket, you're gonna wanna flip this piece. And if you're using it with the C11 and the C14, you'll want to leave it how it is. Okay, so since I am using an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this plate around as I just mentioned just so I can get that longer bolt length and get a much more secure connection to my telescope. So I'm just gonna take these out. And I'm gonna flip this around and put them back in. Now there's one other step I could do right now, um, but I'm actually gonna save that for later just so you get the full version of the installation and you can see exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So I'll mention that I'll mention that later though. So I'm just gonna re-tighten this back down. All right, so now that I've got this smaller set of recessed holes, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a bolt through here, one of the bolts that comes with the bracket for securing it to the telescope. And then I'm gonna slip my orange ring over that as well. So there we go, just like that. And then I'm gonna get it started on my own. So I'm gonna line up one of these holes right there and screw this first part down by hand as best as I can. I'm just gonna do this a little bit more just to get it started. Okay, so then I'm gonna take another one and get the second uh, bolt threaded in. Now you can see at this point, I haven't really got anything tightened down. I've just started them. So you wanna make sure everything is nice and centered. So I'm gonna get this third bolt going and then I'll start tightening things down evenly. Now that the bracket is installed on the telescope, I'm gonna go ahead and install the coupler to the autofocuser itself. So to do that, I'm just taking this two millimeter wrench and undoing these grub screws here. There's two of them. Okay, that should be enough. And then I'm just gonna slip that over the focuser. There we go. And then re-tighten these grub screws down. Now with the coupler installed to the EAF, it's time to test it out for length. So you'll notice if I attach it this way, it's not gonna work because I'm not grabbing any of the shaft. The bracket is too long and it's getting in the way. So I need to shorten that. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove these two bolts now. Okay, so this is actually the part earlier that I was gonna cheat on a little bit, but I flipped this plate around. Well, if you're using an eight inch Schmidt cast grain right now, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna to wanna to use the third slit. So one, two, three. So this one here, when I flipped the plate around, I could have done this step at the same time, but I wanted you to see for yourself that part of the procedure. So let's go ahead and do that now. 
Now it's important before you tighten these that you get it centered. So there is some play in here. So I just like to use my fingers, make, thing, make sure everything is nice and level. And then I do these up by hand before I tighten them. So, okay, there we go. Everything is nice and centered. And then I'll just finish tightening those off. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the two grub screws that actually attach to the telescope focuser. All right, there we go. And stick that over the top there. And you'll see now I have a much better fit. Everything is nice and even right here at the back. All right, so to finish things off, you're gonna take the last two bolts that come with the kit and you're going to secure the focuser to the bracket. So this is a little tricky to get on camera. So I'm just going to slip this through here, line it up with the hole, and then get it started by hand. All right, so with that one in, I'll just go ahead and do the next one here and hold everything together. All right, there we go. And then to finish things off, I'm just gonna tighten these. All right, and the final step is to just tighten these two grub screws. Now with the focuser and the bracket installed to the telescope, you'll notice that there's a little gap between the coupler and the end of the focuser plate here. That is not a problem whatsoever because the coupler is still grabbing the focuser shaft. So it's not, not a big deal. I mean, if it bugs you, I guess you could loosen the, the grub screws back here and move it a little bit forward and retighten them and kind of make it halfway between. But honestly, there's no change in function with a little bit of this exposed. So the autofocusing, the normal focusing, all that still works well. Now, the last thing I'll mention about this is you definitely need to leave some sort of gap. So if you try and level things out, that's fine, but make sure you leave a gap between the coupler and the plate here, because if you don't, you're going to be spinning metal on metal and you definitely don't wanna do that. So make sure you have a gap between the plate and the coupler. One thing I really like about this bracket is that it sticks everything off to the right-hand side. So on a schmidt Cassegrain telescope, the rear cell tends to get really busy. You usually have a focal reducer, your imaging train, maybe a filter wheel or a filter drawer, and a camera. So by having everything shoved off to the side makes it really nice. Now on a RASA, obviously it doesn't matter as much because you don't really have anything in the rear cell, but on these schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, the more room you have, the better. Now the process for installing this on the Celestron 8-inch RASA is identical, as long as your RASA has a standard focuser. All right, so you can see I'm pretty out of focus here, so I'm just going to move the uh, focuser inward and see if that helps. Do it again. I have it set right now to move 500 steps per per press. Okay, there we go. So now that I've got a decent focus, I'm just gonna hit the autofocus button now and tap play. And let it find a find a star. It'll take a few different measurements of the uh, of the star and find the best focus position for it, all on its own. All right, now that the autofocus has succeeded, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a, eh, let's do a two minute test exposure of the Crescent Nebula and see how it turns out. Okay, here it comes. Let's see how it looks. It's loading up now. And there you have it, looks pretty good. The 183 MC Pro has really good sampling on the RASA 8 as well. So the stars are nice and round, and yeah, that focus looks really nice to me. All right, everyone, well, that is how you install the ZWO EAF and the new bracket on Celestron's standard Schmidt Cassegrain and RASA focusers. So I know there was a couple tricky parts to this video, but hopefully overall it was pretty easy to follow along with. So as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and clear skies.